Last week, I, I, I preached a message entitled Soul Care. Somebody say Soul Care. Soul care. I was trying to, trying to express the importance of the need for us to take care of our soul. Remember that your soul represents your mind, so it's what you think. It's your heart, the way you feel, right? Your emotions. How many know emotions are good? Emotions are good. God gave you emotion. I heard a preacher one time say, uh, come to the altar, but leave your emotions in your seat. No, come to the altar and bring your emotions with you, praise God. Because God gave us these emotions to express the way we feel, and they're a good thing. Amen. But you got to keep your emotions in check. <laughs> your will, your desires, all these things encompass the soul. The soul. I was talking last week about how to care for your soul. Care for your soul. Let, let me say something real quick right at the beginning of this message. Don't ever be dependent on somebody else to feed your soul. <clears throat> Amen. Don't ever have to rely on somebody else to feed your soul. I appreciate preachers, but I can feed my soul by myself. I appreciate the church, but the truth is I can feed my soul. I love the worship team, but I can feed my soul all by myself. I have learned how to get into the presence of God without the help of anybody else. And the whole church said... <laughs> I see some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm not. I'm not dependent on anybody else. Get that, a lot of people are dependent on other people to take care of your soul. You, why do you bring it up, Pastor? Because a lot of people, you're codependent. You're codependent. And if you don't have a preacher, if you don't have something on YouTube, if you don't have your favorite TV preacher or somebody, if you don't have your favorite worship team singing you into the presence of God, you can't get there. I'm telling you, in 2021, learn how to feed your soul without the help of anybody else. Go to the Word. Go to the presence of God. Man, I feel like I'm preaching a little bit better than y'all clapping, but that's okay. It's right here at the beginning. That's all right. We're just getting started. Anybody got your Bibles this morning? Anybody got your Bibles? Stand with me onto your feet as we honor God and honor His Word. Today we go to the Gospel of John chapter 4. John chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 7. The Gospel of John chapter 4, verse 7. I'm reading out of the New Century Version. Here's what the Word says. And when a Samaritan woman came to the well to get some water, Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. And the woman said, I'm surprised that you asked me for a drink since you're a Jewish man and I'm a Samaritan woman. Jewish people are not friends with Samaritans. And Jesus said, if you only knew, if you only knew the free gift of God. If you only knew who it is that was asking you for water, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And the woman said, sir, where, where are you going to get this living water? The well is deep. You have nothing to get the water with. And Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give will never thirst. Will never thirst. Never thirst. Somebody say never. Never thirst. He says, because the water that I give will become a spring of water gushing inside, inside that person giving eternal life. Please notice that Jesus contrasts two different kinds of water. There is a water that you can find in this world. There is a water that you can find in society, in our culture. It's water. But if you drink it, you're still going to be thirsty. And then there is this other water that Jesus talks about. He says it is living water. And if you drink this water, Jesus says you will never, 
ever thirst again. Can I tell you, church, the offer today is still living water. Can I get a good amen? The offer today is still living water. Jesus is still right now in this very moment offering to every single person who is present, every single person, you in Brazil, he's offering you today living water all over the world. The offer is still good. I want to preach a message today simply entitled, Never Thirst. Tell the person next to you, Never Thirst. Well, we're learning in 2021 how to care for our soul, how to take care of our mind, our will, our emotions, our heart. Super important. This is important stuff. In 2021, if you're going to have a healthy soul, write this down. You're going to have to tell your soul who's boss. You have to tell your soul who's boss. Your soul is, a lot of people, watch this, you are, you are victims to your soul. You are victims to circumstance. Whatever happens, you, a lot of people, look, I'm not, I know you love Jesus. I know you love Jesus. I know you're on your way to heaven. But there's a lot of people and a lot of Christians that, that, that you are impacted by everything that you think Everything you feel, you are led and motivated by your feelings. You allow your feelings to dictate what you do every single day. You allow your thoughts to dictate. And so if your thoughts are good, you have a good day. If your thoughts are bad, you have a bad day. If you feel good, you have a good day. If you feel bad, you have a bad day. You, you become a victim to your circumstance. And whatever your soul tells you, that's what you do. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes you're motivated, sometimes you're not motivated. Sometimes you're inspired, sometimes you're not inspired. And it's kind of that like this seesaw of emotion. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's like a roller coaster and life is just up and down and up and down and up and down. Please, would you declare this with me, all of us together? Say this with me. I will not be a victim to my circumstances. Say it again. I will not be a victim to my circumstances. This thing is called life. We're living this thing called life. And in life, sometimes you go out to the car and it don't start. Sometimes you, you run over a nail and your tire goes flat. Sometimes your body starts acting crazy and you, and you go to the doctor and, and you find out there's sickness or there's disease or there's something. This thing is called life and not everything that happens in life is good. Sometimes we deal with things that are not good. But watch this. If you're going to have a healthy soul, you got to determine right now at the beginning of 2021, no matter what happens, no matter what life throws at me, I am not going to be a victim to my circumstance. I'm not going to allow my mind to think negative thoughts all day long. I'm not going to let my heart feel things that are not right all day long. I'm going to tell my soul who's boss. Amen, anybody? Some of us, your soul drives and motivates everything that happens every single day. And you are led, you are directed by your soul. You're directed by your emotions. And your emotions carry you. Can I tell you something? If you look in this book right here, Scripture tells us that we are supposed to walk in the Spirit. Amen. We are triune beings. We are the, the most real part of who you are is not your soul, it's your spirit. You're an eternal spirit, what Scripture says. Your spirit is the part of you that is perfect. We talked about this last week. Your spirit is the part of you that was dead that Christ made alive the moment you got born again. And so we have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. And a lot of people, you're being led by your soul when the Bible says you're supposed to be led by your spirit. In fact, the Bible says walk in the spirit. When the Bible says walk in the spirit, not, talk, not talking about taking a walk, although you should take a walk. Amen. It's not talking about taking a walk. It's talking about your daily life, your daily activity, that throughout your daily activities, you are to be led and directed by the Spirit. That you're not, listen to me, not your emotions, not your feelings, not your heart, not your thoughts. 
You're not supposed to be led by those things. You are led by your spirit. And if you're going to be led by your spirit, then you're going to have to practice a couple of things. Write it down. Number one, you're going to have to practice telling your body no. Somebody shout no. No. Thank you. (laughs) Got to tell your body no. We're raising them up right at Lakeside. (laughs) Got to tell your body no. Caroline and I were eating dinner just the other night, and I wanted dessert. I had to tell my body. Boy, I really wanted dessert. I said this a long time ago, but I said, it, we, Caroline and I were uh, shopping down near Millennia this past weekend, and I went by Krispy Kreme, and I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to go to Krispy Kreme. I just drove by Krispy Kreme. And the red light was on. Do you understand what I'm saying? The red light was on. Not talking about just Krispy Kreme. I mean, the light was on. Everything in my body said, go get one of them glazed hot donuts right now. Go get one. Go get one. Go. I had to tell my body. I said this a long time ago, but if you can't tell a donut no, how are you going to tell the devil no? So you have to train and teach your body. And I'm telling you, some of y'all don't tell your body no to nothing. Your body says, one o'clock in the morning, you hungry, go eat. Y'all go right to the refrigerator, start eating stuff. You better learn how to tell your body no. Don't be led and directed by your body. Don't be led by your flesh. Watch this. You got to learn how to tell your soul no. Sometimes I'm tempted to think things that are not helpful for me. Sometimes I'm, my soul sometimes tries to go down a destructive path of thoughts that are negative. And I know it's not you, it's just me, but I'm just telling you, sometimes I have these thoughts and these thoughts are not godly and they're not good and they're not wholesome and they don't help and they're not good for anything. And I have to tell, I'm not just a victim to my thoughts. I don't just say, well, you know, I'm thinking it. So just, you know, I got to think it. No, I tell my soul who's boss. We're done thinking those thoughts. We're done uh, uh, thinking about that and, 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 and meditating on it. I'm done with that. Why? Because I'm not led by my soul. I am led by my spirit. And the whole church said, Galatians 5.25 says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk. You are not led by your flesh. You are not led by your body. You are not led by your soul, your heart, your mind, your will. You are led by your spirit. Amen, anybody. Amen. Romans 8, 14 says this. The true children of God. The what? The, the, the what kind of children? So, so there could be some children that aren't true. Well, the Bible says, but the true children of God are those who let God's spirit lead them. How do I know the difference between a true child of God and maybe not so true child of God? Well, the true children of God are being led by the Spirit. They're being directed by the Spirit, not following everything they think. I'm just telling you, if I, if I followed everything I think, man, I couldn't even be your pastor today. <laughs> Anybody else? I'd be in prison right now if I, if I <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? If I had a dollar every time a Christian had said to me, well, pastor, I'm just following my heart. I just, let me say real quick, following your heart is the stupidest thing you could possibly do. I know this relationship's not good. I don't think it's good for me, but pastor, I just got to follow my heart. You so dumb. Honestly, you are dumb. God loves dumb people, but you are dumb. He don't even love Jesus. He don't even love Jesus. He don't even go to church. And here you are. Well, well, Pastor, I'm just following my heart. You know, I got to start this career. I'm going to start it because I'm just following my heart. Watch this. Stop following your heart and start following Jesus. Stop following your heart and start following God. Be led by your spirit. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 says this, that the human heart is the most deceitful. Y'all still here? Because I know some people didn't like that. Are y'all still here? Because this is scripture. It's not my opinion. I didn't make this up. I didn't write this last night. 
The human heart is the most deceitful of all things, and it is desperately wicked. The human heart, not God's heart, the human heart, the human mind, your will, your emotions, man, you can't follow your heart. You've got to follow your spirit. You've got to follow God. You have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit every single day. And if your soul is going to prosper, and I believe it will in this year, no matter what happens, no matter, look, we start off 2020, didn't nobody know what was going to happen in 20. And here we are 2021. And I'm not promising a bed of roses to anybody, but I'm just saying to you, no matter what comes against you, no matter what you face, no matter what adversary comes against you, your soul can prosper in 2021. If you will learn, if you will learn how to feed your soul and be led by your spirit. In fact, write this down. You got to learn how to talk to your soul got to talk to your soul. When I look at the psalmist, he's having a conversation with his soul. Listen to what he says. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Please notice that the human soul thirsts for God. And what we see in life is people who are trying to fill a hunger with every other thing on this planet and there is is nothing on this earth that can feed the human soul like God. Oh, we try though, don't we? God knows we try. Listen to the psalmist in verse 3. He says, my tears have been my food day and night. Ever been there? Ever been there? While they continually say to me, where is your God? And when I remember these things, I pour out my soul. Listen to the way he's talking. I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with a multitude and I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept the pilgrim feast. Listen, he's saying there are moments where I pour out my, it is healthy to pour out your soul. Just make sure you pour it out to the right person. (laughs) I don't know why so many people want to pour out your soul on social media. For the life of me, I will never, I don't know, just give me one person I can talk to. Give me one person, just one person who thinks I might be talking the truth. And just, okay, thank you. I don't know why. It was hard to find somebody. I'm glad I found you. I, for the life of me, if I'm going to pour out my soul, If I'm going to let you know me and see me, I got to be selective. I can't just pour out my soul to everybody. You don't even know me. Some of you don't even love me. If I'm going to pour out my soul, I'm going to pour it out to somebody who loves me, knows me, wants God's best for me. The psalmist is pouring out his soul within him. It's good to do that. It's healthy to do that. Anybody had a good cry lately? Men don't cry. Baby, I can cry with the best of them. (laughs) And I promise you, I'm a man. Uh, mm, I I had so much to say right there and I didn't say it. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to the psalmist, verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Do you hear him? He's having a conversation with himself. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. One of the best things you can ever do is talk to your soul and ask your soul the question, why? Why? It, listen, it's called soul talk. We, we've got to learn how to talk to your soul. Now listen, when I talk to my soul, I don't do it in public. 
I do. I do it in private. You, know, like you, got, you got to catch the right moment to talk to your soul. You can't be going down Walmart aisle talking to your soul. Whatever. People think you're nuts. <laughs> but listen to me. It is not nuts to talk to your soul. It's biblical. It's not crazy to talk to yourself. Amen. Amen. It might be crazy to think somebody's in the room that's not. That might be crazy. But it's not crazy to have a conversation with your soul. And let me tell you right now, your soul must be challenged. You must challenge your soul. Your soul is going to go down paths that God does not want you going down. Your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, they are going to work against you. They are going to work against the desire of God in your life. And when that happens, you don't just sit there and let your mind think crap thoughts for all day long. You've got to tell your soul who's boss. You've got to challenge your soul. You've got to do what the psalmist did. You've got to ask the question, why? Why? So, why are you so downcast? So, why are you so depressed? So, why are you so lonely? So, why are you so anxious? So, why are you so worried? What, what lie are you believing right now? What, 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 where's your focus? What, what are, what are your, your thoughts? What, why are these thoughts running? And then he says right there in that verse, he says, hope in God. Put your faith in God. Put your trust in God. Get a hold of your thoughts. Bring them captive to the obedience of Christ. And then place your hope in Jesus Christ. And no matter what comes, I'm not going to allow my mind to sit here and think negatively for the next 24 hours. I'm going to put my hope in Jesus Christ, my confidence in God. And you know what? The moment that I do that, my soul changes. My soul changes. I tell my soul what to do. My soul does not tell me. Amen. And the whole church said. Amen. Verse 6, Psalmist says, oh my, oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will what? Amen. I'm just telling you, if your soul is depressed, it's probably because you have forgotten God. And I know we got a lot of depressed Christians in 2021. I know we got a lot of anxious Christians in 2021. We got a lot of worried Christians in 2021. And you listen real, real good to what I'm about to say right now. If you're anxious, if you're fearful, if you're worried, if you're depressed, if you're any of those things, listen to me. I think you might have forgotten who God is. I think you might have forgotten who he is and what he wants to do. Watch this. Because the soul needs constant reminders. Is it not constant? Come on, I'm preaching the word today, but I'm telling you, I might have to remind my soul tonight at 10 o'clock everything I'm talking about right now. I may need a reminder tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. The soul needs constant reminders. You have to constantly remind your soul of the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God. The psalmist says in verse 8, this is what he does. The Lord, he's talking about his soul. His soul's downcast, oppressed. But here's what he says. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night. His song shall be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Listen to what he says. My soul is downcast. I'm dealing with some depression. I'm thinking some bad thoughts, but I'm stopping right now in the name of Jesus. My hope is in Jesus Christ. My faith Faith is in God and his loving kindness is with me right now in this moment. And when I go to bed at night, there'll be a song of victory in my heart. Amen, Amen anybody. Amen. If anybody understands the human soul, Jesus does. Jesus knows the human soul. And in John chapter 4, we are introduced to this interaction between Jesus and a Samaritan woman. And what we know about this woman, we know that she's a Samaritan. We know she has a past. We know she has a record. We know she's been around, round, 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 round. You know what I'm saying? She got five husbands and the man she's with right now is not her husband. And she's drawing at the well at the hottest part of the day because she can't hang with the other ladies because the lady's talking about it. And besides, the other ladies don't like her because She's talking to their husband. You understand what I'm saying. It just, nobody really likes this woman except Jesus. 
Jesus goes to have a conversation with this woman. And it's interesting to me, but I love this about Jesus. If anybody understands the human soul, it's Jesus. Jesus has been on a journey. He's walking. He's tired. I want you to think about this for a second. The creator of the cosmos. Hebrews 1 and 3 says everything is held together by the power of his word. He's holding the universe together with his words. And now we see him wrapped in flesh, sitting at a well, tired. He's tired. <clears throat> when Jesus came to this world, Philippians 2 tells us that he emptied himself. And he took the form of a servant. He became like us. Whenever I'm talking to anybody, I just got to know one, one thing. Do you get me? Because if you don't get me, I can't talk to you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't understand me, you and I can't have, I'm not pouring out my soul to anybody who doesn't get me. What I love about Jesus, he gets me. Amen. Jesus understands me. He, he knows me. How does he know me? Because he became like me. Amen. He wrapped himself in flesh and he knows what it is to get tired. He knows what it is to get exhausted and he knows what it is to thirst. He knows what it is to need something to drink, to need water, because he looked right at that woman and he said, can you get me a drink? Hebrews 4 verse 15 says, for our high priest is able to understand our weaknesses. Our high priest, he understands our soul. He understands, oh my God, he understands. I promise you he understands. He was tempted in every way that we are. But he did not sin. And Jesus looks at this woman and he says to her, give me a drink. Give me a drink. The woman is taken back. How, how could you possibly ask me for a drink? Nobody talks to me. Nobody even acknowledges me. No, I'm invisible to everybody. You're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. You're a man. I'm a woman. You, you are breaking all the cultural norms to have this conversation. Jesus says, yeah, yeah. I need a drink. I need a drink. Listen to what he says in, in verse 10. He says, if you only knew the free gift of God, if you only knew who it is that is asking for you for water, he said you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Can, can I tell you something real quick? She didn't know. She's talking to God and she doesn't know. She's talking to the one who knew her before she was formed in the womb of her mother, called her, chose her. She's talking to God and she is clueless. She is talking to the one who can offer a water that she can drink and immediately eliminate any thirst she's ever had in her time. This is a woman that has been filling the thirst for her soul from men, sex, pleasure, money, materialism. She's been trying to fill her soul with all these things, but she's still empty. And she has no clue that the Son of God showed up right to her well to have this conversation and to ask her for a drink. Jesus says, if you only knew, if you only knew the gift of God, this free gift, if if you knew, if you knew who I was and, and if you knew my heart and if you knew my love for you and if you knew my plan for you, if you knew my will for you, if you knew my thoughts towards you, that my thoughts are good, but my thoughts for you are for you to prosper and have a hope and a future. If you only knew, you would have begged me for this water and I would have immediately given to you. Can I tell you something? Listen to me. If you're a child of God, we are done being led by our soul in 2021. We are done being led by our thoughts and being led by a heart that is desperately wicked. As we go into this new year, we're going to be led by the Spirit of God. We're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. We're going to be led by Jesus Christ. We're going to be led by that born-again nature on the inside of us. 
Because the only difference between a Christian and a non-Christian is that Christians ask for living water. The only difference, we're not better, we got the same stuff, we got the same issues, we deal with the same things. The only thing that differentiates us from anybody else in the world is that Christians ask, watch this, and they keep asking. And they keep asking. Jesus said in John 4, verse 14, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water that I give will never be thirsty. In other words, there's a difference between water and living water. There's a difference. I'm not going to lie to you, church. There's water out there you can drink. There's water out there. I'm not going to lie to you. There's water. There's, there's momentary pleasure. Momentary things. There's, there's, there's things out there that you, hey, watch this. Everybody's drinking something. Every, every single person in here, you're drinking something. There's a lot out there to drink. Some of y'all drinking pleasure, drinking pleasure, drinking pleasure. You can drink that. Watch this. You can drink a lot of things. You, you can, you can, there's a lot of things you can do to find momentary pleasure or relief. A lot of things. But there is a difference between relief and restoration. Some of us, the only thing you're looking for is relief. You want relief. That's why you're, that's why you're drinking, because you want relief, right? That's why you're looking for a friend at 3 o'clock in the morning, because you're looking for relief. That's why you're putting all your stuff into your business and your money, because you are looking for relief. But I promise you, you can find relief in those things, but you cannot find restoration. And as I go into 2021, I've just made up my mind. I don't want relief. I want restoration. I don't want relief. I want everything God has for me. I don't want relief. I want fulfillment and peace in my heart. And it only comes from drinking from a well that offers living water. Question, what are you drinking? What are you drinking? This woman in John 4, she was drinking promiscuity. She was, she was drinking hell. Everything hell offered. Can I tell you something about drinking what the enemy offers you? Sin always leaves you more thirsty. Yes, that's good. It's like drinking vinegar. It's like drinking something that just, it's, it's a fluid. I mean, you know, but it just, in the end, it just leaves you more thirsty than you were in the beginning. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Can anybody say amen to that? Yeah. Jesus says in John 4, verse 7, whoever drinks the water that I give, they will never thirst again. There's a place of fulfillment that we can find in Christ that fills the human soul. I mean, fills the human soul so well, so perfectly that you never thirst again. He says the water I give will become a spring of water gushing up inside that person, giving eternal life. When, when we first walked in today, everybody should have received one of these. Do you have one? Locate it real quick. Locate it real quick. This is, some of y'all probably said, like, man, what are these? Do we eat these? What, please, watch this. Don't eat this. Like, oh, we're doing communion today. Listen to me. Don't eat this. <laughs> please don't eat this. This is not communion. Watch this. I, I want, you're going to take these home. Can I tell you what this is? This represents your soul. This represents your soul. Without Christ, this is about what it looks like. <laughs> Thin, nothing to it, dry, crusty, hard, calloused. Then Jesus says, I man, I'm offering you living water. And the moment a soul touches living water, Something happens. That soul begins to expand, to grow, to be filled. Amen. See what I'm talking about? The moment, the moment that the soul touches living water. This is the offer. This is what Jesus says. Not that old dried up, cracked, hard, calloused soul. No, when you come to Christ and you give your life to God, 
You get living water, and that soul that was once hard and calloused and unresponsive and couldn't love and didn't know how to love others, didn't even know how to love yourself, that soul right there becomes alive in that moment. You experience real love, true love, genuine love, godly love. And your heart begins to expand in a way that it has never expanded. I mean, Jesus says, if anyone believes in me, rivers of living water, rivers of living water will flow from that person's heart. This is the invitation. This is the offer. And life has a way of squeezing. Can I just tell you something? If you're here today and that soul, that, that sponge you got on your hand looks a whole lot like your soul, Can I just tell you real quick, all you got to do is take a drink. Like, 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 like some of y'all holding that and that represents your soul. That's what you feel like. Your thoughts, your emotion, your heart. You say, man, it looks a whole lot like this. Pastor, what do I do? Help me. Now help yourself. Take a drink. Take a drink. Well, pastor, will you come over and will you put the, will you do that? No, I won't. No, I will not. You get up and you pick the cup up because, watch this. If I, oh God, if I bring the cup to you, you're going to expect me to feed your soul for the rest of your life. Come on, pick the cup up yourself. Jesus is the one offering it. Take a drink for the love of God. And you drink from this cup, your soul's going to come alive. But I'll tell you the difference between Christians and everybody else. Watch this. We simply keep drinking. <laughs> we just, hey, look at y'all at church today. What are you doing today? Drinking. <laughs> oh, y'all at 21 days of prayer? What are y'all doing all the 21 days of prayer? Drinking. We got a serious drinking problem at this church. I'll tell you that right now. Because we've been drinking from that well. Everybody's drinking from a well, church. Everybody's drinking from a well. But most of us are drinking from a well that will never quench the thirst. And that's why you go back to that well and go back to that well and go back to But Jesus says, I'm living water. And the moment you drink this water, you will never, your soul will never thirst again. And you know what I've noticed? The first time I ever did this little sponge thing, this is, this is my original sponge that I use. The first time I saw this illustration, and I haven't touched water to this thing since that illustration. It's calloused again. It's hard again. It's, it's, there's no water. It's dry. That's because, watch this, the human soul needs to continually drink from that, but watch this. It's not. It's not really that difficult. What do I got to do? I got to go on a missions trip. I got to go find myself. I got to go. No, listen. You just got to drink again. You just got to drink because the moment that I go back to living water, no matter how dry, how callous, how hard, how unresponsive my soul becomes, the moment I go back to living water, watch this. It's good again. It's replenished again. Hey, thanks for watching. If this video was a blessing to you, take two seconds and click that like button. Share your comments with us. If the Word of God is making an impact in your life, we want to hear about it. So email us at praisegod at thelakeside.church. We're always encouraged to hear how the Word of God is making an impact in your life. One last thing subscribe to our channel. That way you never have to miss a thing. It takes literally seconds. So subscribe before you go. We love you guys. Thanks for watching.